What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting. So I had the chance to listen in on the entire interview between Kathy Wood and Jeremy Siegel. Jeremy C Siegel was a special guest on Kathy Wood and ARK Invest channel. So there's a 50 minute video posted uh, about 16, 20 hours ago. So pretty much yesterday where Kathy Wood is interviewing Jeremy Siegel to get his thoughts on the economy and the markets as well. So that's going to be this video summarized for you in hopefully under 15 minutes. Make sure that you drop a like. There were some very, very interesting, exciting, and shocking stuff said by Jeremy Siegel. So I'm happy to share that with you in this summary video. So make sure that you also check out their video if you're interested. It's a little bit longer, so it's going to take you at least an hour to kind of finish through that. But this is a full summary of everything that was discussed. So make sure that you drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and also don't forget to join our Discord. There is a 16% discount. The link's going to be down below. And the Fundamental and Technical Analysis course is currently 60% off. Coupon code CHRISTMAS60 if you are interested in taking advantage of that before Christmas as well. So... First thing that Jeremy Siegel and Kathy would touch on is the money growth, right? So money growth, which is the growth of money, so M2. Um, and that has pretty much come down to practically 0%. So last couple couple of years, we've seen money growth kind of spike, go parabolic because of the Federal Reserve's aggressive money pumping strategies. And of course, being very, very easy on interest rates and easy monetary policy per se has led to significant growth in money supply. But now in 2022, we've gone down to 0% money growth. In other words, also negative money growth here. And the money supply increase that we had in 2020 was the greatest in 150 years, according to Jeremy Siegel. And he says, and I quote, that just blew my mind. I knew in the summer of 2020, there was going to be a lot of inflation. And all that talk about transitory inflation from Jerome Powell was, quote, nonsense. Suddenly in 2022, by March until now, we have had a decrease in money supply. And since World War II, we have never had a decrease in money supply. It's like going to, it's like going at 150 miles an hour. So that's an analogy that he uses that the Federal Reserve pretty much went uh, in a car pretty much at 150 miles an hour and then slamming the brakes as hard as you can. And they have been terrible in both ways. So not only Jeremy Siegel says that the, the, the aggressive monetary policy, you know, and the easy money policy that, that led to an increase in money supply blew his mind. But Jerome Powell's comments on transitory inflation were absolutely nonsense. And the analogy that he uses was pretty much going as fast as you can and then slamming the brakes as hard as you can. And that's what the Federal Reserve did back in 2020, going as fast as you can. And then now they're slamming the brakes, pretty much going as aggressive uh, as, as possible and, and just kind of really putting forth a very tightening uh, monetary policy at the moment. Now, he goes on by saying that inflationary expectations have never become unanchored or never really became un unanchored in 2022 this time around as they did during the Volcker time. And that required, so back in Volcker time, because the inflation expectations were actually unanchored, that required for Volcker to increase rates all the way up to 20%. And right now, what we have is an environment where we are in a secular decline in real interest rates. Real interest rates all around the world are going down. So remember, real interest rates are nominal minus CPI minus inflation. And because inflation is so high, the real interest rates are negative and they are going down even further. And the 10-year tips rate in 2000 was 4.5% positive. And, you know, that it's generally gone down since. And that means that this has been a violent, violent increase in real interest rates as well. Um, and, and, and Jeremy Siegel goes on by saying that their plan to raise rates even further to 45 to 5% is crazy when all commodity prices, shipments, oil prices, real estate, uh, everything has just gone down. So this idea that we haven't made sufficient progress, according to Jeremy Siegel, is incredulous. And it was very disturbing for Jeremy Siegel to hear that the Federal Reserve is not done and will continue to raise rates in 2023. Uh, he says, and I quote, that is not necessary from the Fed. Siegel believes it didn't even need this 50 basis point hike in December, which is quite surprising. He says that they didn't even need the 50 basis point hike in December. And uh, raising rates in 2023 is not necessary from the Federal Reserve. Uh, but the Fed needs to just stop and watch what's happening in the economy. And Siegel said about one month ago, which pretty much shocked a lot of people listening, that if the Fed just stops and observes the economy, we will most likely see a two handle on the Fed funds rate and not the four or five handle like the Federal Reserve actually expects. Meaning that if the Federal Reserve just stops today and tries to really look at what's going on, tries to observe the underlying economy, 
it's very high chance, very high probability that we're going to see a 2% interest rate by 2023. We'll most likely see that number, not the 4 to 5% the Federal Reserve is projecting out in their FOMC, in their dot plot, meaning that there could be a lot of cuts, a lot of cuts, like we're talking from 4.5% down to 2%, that's a 250 basis point cut from the Federal Reserve in 2023, according to Jeremy Siegel. He says, we are going to see a slowdown in the prices. Real estate prices are going down. They will go down 10 to 15% is what he says. And real estate prices are in a downtrend. The Fed can't ignore that. And if the Fed keeps raising rates in the upper 4 to 5% range, that almost guarantees a recession in 2023-2024. And if the Fed pivots and just watches or observes, we still have a chance for a soft landing. So lots of amazing thoughts here from Jeremy Siegel. He says there's unusual things happening in the economy. We added close to four and a half million jobs in 2022. And even, even after that many jobs additions, even, if, even after that many people getting added to the payroll or the labor market, we saw no growth in GDP. Uh, so there was a big collapse in productivity in the first two quarters of this year. And if you can get productivity back up, if you can get a productivity bounce, we could put a further downward pressure on overall prices and inflation as well. Now, because of the great difficulty during COVID to hire workers, businesses are keeping their employees on. So there's obviously been, a, been an issue related to over hiring. Uh, and right now people or businesses or companies just want to keep their employees on. Um, and, and, and he says that we could see a flip in 2023. We could see payrolls decline. And even though we added four and a half million jobs this year in 2022, and there was no growth, there was zero growth in GDP. Next year, we might see a flip where there might be a loss of workers, companies and businesses might actually end up laying people off. And we may see some growth in GDP as companies get rid of unproductive uh, workers. Uh, and of course, you know, they keep on the productive workers and we see some growth in the gross domestic product. Now, the fall of productivity in the first two quarters was the biggest drop in productivity in since World War II, and the loss of productivity had to do with overhiring, which will go away in 2023, is what Jeremy Siegel also mentions. A couple things about globalization, he says it is very, still very positive, and he's worried that it may go away. Economics is all about specialization. The trade routes that were created back in the Roman empires and Roman times, they are very, very efficient. They're very useful and they need to stay there. They're important. And without them, you know, we just can't shut everything off. Uh, and he says the Fed should lower rates and get that money growth back up. Money growth over the last several decades has been closer to five and a half percent on a compounded basis with inflation at closer to two percent. And that's what we need to get back to. We can't decrease money growth to negative. We need to get back to 5% and that will bring inflation back down to the Fed's target around 2%. And he says, um, finally, about real estate and home prices, he says that I put the true housing numbers in my analysis. So pretty much using the actual data and not the faulty data from Bureau of Labor Statistics or, Statistics or BLS, uh, but the core inflation has been negative for the last two months instead of positive if we use the Fed's faulty data. So he says that, actual core inflation has been negative if you were to account for the actual housing prices, real estate, pretty much shelter and core, uh, you know, shelter and rents uh, instead of the faulty data that the Fed uses, uh, which is what they're basing their decisions off of. So very, very interesting stuff. You know, first of all, obviously saying that the Fed's transitory inflation was absolute nonsense uh, and the money growth has just blown his mind away in 2020 and 2021. Uh, but now we're getting to a situation where things are really, really tight. Financial conditions are getting worse and the Federal Reserve absolutely needs to stop uh, and just observe what's going on within the economy. And even a 50 basis point hike was a bit too much. According to Jerome Siegel, they are making a mistake, no doubt. Um, and he does expect that in 2023, there might be a little bit of a flip with a loss of workers, with some layoffs, unemployment rate possibly going higher, and yet GDP coming in a little bit stronger as the companies and businesses keep their more productive workers um, for next year. So let me know what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are. And again, you know, t take that, that, you know, with Jeremy Siegel, definitely do some more analysis, but I, I do respect him as a macroeconomist. Uh, person, you know, he's, he's, he's got a PhD in economics. I mean, he went to school, uh, you know, for economics and he's also teaching economics at the Warren School of Business. So, well, he's retired now, but definitely uh, he's got a lot of experience, both academic and practical experience when it comes to the markets and the economy. So definitely, you know, when he speaks, I take his word with a lot of uh, weight. 
So I'm gonna do some more analysis and there's definitely a lot to digest here, unpack uh, in this in this sort of speech and in, in this interview. So let me know what your thoughts are, let me know what your comments are in the in, in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe if you're new. As always, happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video.